Well, welcome. We're here again for our Common Sense Theology series. We're glad you could join us. And uh, we're, today we're going to discuss the Eighth Commandment. And the Eighth Commandment is this. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. Now, first of all, we need to discuss who is our neighbor. Who is our neighbor? Well, basically our neighbor is anybody and everyone. There is uh, something to be said about the story of the Good Samaritan. In that story, Jesus talks about a man. He only mentions a man. And at the end, he is asked, you know, he asked the question, who is who was a neighbor to the man? And here's the thing, it was just a man. There's no other description given of him, no other thing. We, he was beaten, he was robbed, he, they took his clothes, he, he was laying there naked. You couldn't tell if he was a rich man, a poor man, couldn't tell what his nationality was, whether he's a religious man or, or not a religious man. You couldn't tell anything. And basically Jesus says, everybody is your neighbor. And we are to look at our neighbor indiscriminately. And in doing that, we also need to protect our neighbor's reputation. Now, today there is a great um, thing happening in this world, and it is called you are guilty by accusation. You used to have to have evidence. You used to have to have a jury trial and all that, but we are very apt to just take allegations, and people make allegations pretty much willy-nilly today. That's not to be done. You are not to do those things. We are not to just make an allegation because where does a person go to get their reputation back? You have to also go up toward the second commandment. Look, what is the most important thing that God has? It's His name. Well, a person's name is just as important to them as God's name is to him. And we are to protect our name. We are to protect the name of our neighbors. So therefore, we're not to spread rumors. We are not to start things. And actually, we're to actually defend our neighbor and his reputation. Let's understand something. Many years ago, I grew up in a very, very small town. And a person's name meant something in that very small town that I grew up in. As a matter of fact, you could, if your parents had a good name, you could go to the bank, you could borrow money, you could actually start a, a, a credit card that way, you could actually have credit at a local gas station. Doesn't work that way anymore. It's a much different system, but a name meant something. People took pride in the name that they were given. And they understood that if they sold that name, that there was something was going to happen, that that reputation that that family had had would take a hit. Same with this. We're to protect ourselves. We're to protect our neighbor's reputation. Always remember that when you make an accusation, you are affecting somebody. You can actually murder somebody in this way. You can actually hurt them financially. Perhaps they'll never get another job in the career path that they had chosen. Perhaps you could say something and make an accusation and it destroy their marriage, could destroy their family, could destroy any aspect of their life. That is why we are to protect our neighbor by not making false accusations, by not lying about them, by not spreading rumors. We need to be very careful what we do, for our society is very apt to do this. This is one of the major issues that we have. It's very easy to sit behind a keyboard and be anonymous and make these types of accusations and to ruin people's lives. It's done way too often by too many people. And I pray today that we would understand that this Eighth Commandment, it has a lot of things that are very pertinent to it, and it is a very serious commandment. Again, we do pray that if you have comments or if you have questions you'd like to ask, we'd love to have you ask those questions. We want to discuss anything and everything with you. Also, we invite you to come be with us. We're not a church full of a bunch of fluff. If you want to be entertained, then, hey, I'm sorry we're not the church for you. But if you want to grow in Jesus, you want to grow in discipleship, and you want to learn more about God, we're a teaching church. We want to do those things, and that's what God has called us to do. Pray that you come and join us and be a part of us. Again, many blessings, and God richly be with you today and each day. Amen.